In this lesson, we are going to take a look at a real-world application for linear programming, how it works, and how to solve it. But before we dig into the actual word problem here, we want to make sure we formulate the problem correctly, or basically setting it up so that it's easier to answer. And there's three components that you'll see um, to do that. There's decision variables, your objective function, and constraints. Decision variables is basically determining what it is that you want to produce or make, you know, to optimize. The, the second thing is your objective fu function, which you're either going to be maximizing or minimizing under any given circumstances. Perfect examples of this is uh, being in a business setting. You want to maximize profits for a particular activity or you want to minimize costs for labor or um, you know, manufacturing. And ultimately, um, that leads us to constraints. We, we don't live in an environment where there are infinite uh, resources, so we have to take into account the available resources we have on hand. So let's take a look at uh, the problem we've got in front of us. Bronson's Custom Woodworking is a locally operated business in the Seattle area. Bronson specializes in the production of desks, bookshelves, and nightstands, which right there tells us um, decision variable. They produce desks, so I'm going to do D, V as decision variable, and we've got number of desks. produce. We have uh, B that I'll use as a variable for bookshelves, number of bookshelves to produce, and nightstands, and number of nightstands. So that ultimately is what we're trying to find out, the number of each of these units that we should make. And now we want to figure out, is that to maximize profit or to minimize costs? Let's uh, continue reading. Currently, Bronson has 600 feet of available use for production. A desk requires 4 feet of oak. Bookshelves require 2 feet of oak and a nightstand requires three feet of oak. So that sounds like um, that's a part of the constraints, but let's take a look here. The, the power saw, um, Bronson has a power saw for cutting the oak into the appropriate pieces. A desk requires 30 minutes, bookshelves require 15 minutes, and a nightstand requires 15 minutes. Uh, the power saw itself is expected to be available for 36 hours next week. Uh, that's a constraint as well. But I want to try and make sure we are establishing the objective function first. And I think we can see it right here. Uh, when we go towards the last uh, sentence or two here, desks are sold for $79.99 and have a unit variable cost of $42.99. So revenue of nearly $80 and a unit variable cost of $43. If we subtract that, we would have 79.99 minus 42.99, we have 37. So when we're looking at the objective function, we are looking to maximize profit. And the way that we write that out, we have $37 of profit per unit of D per desk plus um, the bookshelves sell for $44.95 and have a cost of $18.99. So if we do $44.95 minus $18.95 or $18.99, that leaves us with $25.00 and 96 cents a profit per bookshelf. 
and last but not least, the nightstand. Sells for $49.99 and costs $29.99, leaving us with $20 of profit for the nightstand. N. So our objective function is 37D plus 2596B plus 20N. Which brings us back to um, the original uh, issue we saw was constraints. We know that just by looking at the problem here, um, a desk requires four feet of oak, the bookshelf requires two feet of oak, and the nightstand requires three feet of oak. And it says here that they have a, a limit of 600 feet available. So I'm actually going to bring this up here just so we can draw on the same spot. Um, we know a desk is four plus two feet for the bookshelf plus how many for the nightstand? Three. That all has to be less than or equal to 600 feet. <coughs> Is there any other constraints that we see in the problem? Aside from 600 feet of lumber for production, it looks like there's um, some labor issues. There's a power saw that the employees will use, and there is expected to be 36 hours available next week. And when we write this out, um, a desk requires 30 minutes, plus the shelf requires 15 minutes, and the nightstand requires 15. Now, we're looking at um, a measurement of units in minutes here, whereas the power saw is expected to be available for 36 hours next week. So what we're going to do to find out the total constraint here is 36 hours times 60 minutes, and that will give us 2,000 160 minutes for that constraint. And then the next aspect, I believe there's a finishing department. After cutting, the pieces of work in process are hand finished by craftsmen in Bronson's finishing department. Finishing department is expected to operate for 40 hours next week. And here comes the restraints again, the constraints. Um, a desk requires 60 minutes, 60D, plus um, 30B for the bookshelf, finishing minutes, and then nightstands require 90 minutes, 90N, also less than or equal to, that was 40 hours, multiply that by 60 minutes, is going to give us 2,400 available minutes of finishing, 2,160 minutes of uh, power saw minutes available, and the last one, 600 feet of board. So those are all of the primary resources, but we also have to think of what's called a non-negative constraint, which in this setting, is there ever going to be a time where Bronson's Custom Woodworking is going to make negative bookshelves or negative number of desks or a negative number of nightstands? No, that's not possible. So we need to make one final constraint that symbolizes the number of desks, the number of bookshelves, and the number of nightstands is all greater than or equal to zero units. This here summarizes how to formulate a linear, linear programming problem.